welcome to Macna New Orleans part three. We're gonna start off this segment with a couple of aquariums that I found in the Pro Aquatics booth. Pro Aquatics has a whole bunch of breeding fish that spawn regularly and from those eggs they raise the fish that are sold to fish stores across the nation. They happen to be one of the sponsors of my local club DFW Mass. And I mean look at these beautiful clowns. Who couldn't love these? And I see blennies in there and they have jackfish and they have look down fish. You're gonna see more of these in the next couple of minutes. As I stood in front of this tank, I, I realized how long it was. It's a six foot long tank. And so I had to ask him, what size is this tank? Because it didn't look like it had a lot of water in it. Believe it or not, you know, it looks like it's made with one inch acrylic. It's rimless it's a, and it's uh, <laughs> holding 70 gallons of water. That's it for a six foot tank. Typically a six foot tank is 180 gallons. This one was 70. And it's a beautiful way to show off the fish that they breed and uh, that we can purchase for our own aquariums. One of the comments that people make when they don't understand our industry or our hobby is they think that everything we take comes from the ocean. And yet a lot of these fish are actually hybrids that were raised specifically for the selling of the aquarium trade. And yet you'd never find 90% of these clowns in the ocean because that's not their normal markings. So for those that are worried that we are raping the oceans, we are not. These are completely hobbyist friendly. They are aquacultured fish, which means that we can make as many as we want and sell them and enjoy them and have zero guilt at all in putting them in our aquariums to enjoy. In a previous Macna video, someone asked, is it possible to put this many clowns in a tank? And I'm gonna tell you now, the answer is no. Here are a couple of cowfish that are also being tank raised from eggs and it was something new for them and so they're on display. I also asked, are these the ones that can take out your tank if they die? And one of the things in the discussion was that they have a toxicity based on what they eat or consume. And then when one does die in a tank, could that be a factor? And so far, you know, in their own experience, they actually had one that per perished and yet the other fish in the tank were not harmed. Obviously, your filtration, the water volume, this little tiny cube would probably take out another fish if they were sharing the water. But for you know, people with an average size aquarium, 40 gallons, 60 gallons, 75 gallons or larger, if they were to add such a fish to their tank, it's not something that they have to be concerned with like it's some kind of ticking time bomb. While it's always possible to do research online or in books, it's always nice to get some answers directly from the source when you're at MACNA. So ask questions, learn what you can. And the obligatory mangrove. <laughs> Here's a tank I always love seeing, and it's probably because of all the look down fish. I mean, yeah, it's cool, it's a round tank, but these fish are just, <laughs> I love them. And they get really big, like 12 to 16 inches each. And I've also heard that as they get bigger, they get a little more voracious and they can eat other fish. So a lot of times you'll see these giant silvery look down fish in a species only tank. A huge one for them to have plenty of room to swim, but there's no actual other inhabitants with them typically, at least not in the public aquariums I visited. I asked what these little fish were and they're called jackknives and they grow to be six to nine inches in size. They do dwell on reefs and these are raised to eat aquarium food. The next thing I wanna show you is this rack system that's designed to fit in a fish store to display the livestock in individual containers. I thought that was a really cool option and I discussed it in a YouTube live video about, I don't know, a week ago when I was first talking about what Macna was like. So here's the back side of it and all the water flows to the top and then trickles down to each container and drains out of each container into that little black floss which works its way down, down, down into the sump beneath. You could have a UV down there, you could run carbon, you could probably squeeze a skimmer in there. But the containers themselves could each hold individual livestock invertebrates of all kinds and make it easy to shop. And then for some reason, I never actually spent any time in this booth, even though they had an amazing sump on display that went into a super filtration system. Maybe this guy chased me away. This right here is a lovely setup by the Red Sea Reefer series. I'm going to guess this tank is probably somewhere around 110 gallons. I'm sure they measure it in liters. I didn't ask for dimensions, but look how pretty it is for something that was just set up a couple of days ago. And now this is the tank that I wanted to share with you guys. So this is made by AGE. 
and it is a top heavy looking tank but it's super well built it's designed to where it can hold all the weight of that and apparently they've done the math and said a 250 pound man could stand in there and jump up and down and it will not flip over myself i'm sure i'd be a little nervous working on the top of that tank reaching in there cleaning until i've done it about 10 times and maybe i'd feel like it's gonna hold me anyway they only made two for the show and i believe they were sold they really are a conversation piece that would look great in anyone's living room gotta point out another huge batch of clownfish and i just feel like that should be a rule that whenever you set up a tank you fill it up with clowns at least for the first few days <laughs> i know i know i'm taking that back already because people are going to actually listen to me and do it but this is so pretty it is just so eye-catching i wish we could actually do this uh, but uh, unfortunately as the clowns get older and more mature they get a little more aggressive and they start duking it out so it looks great at trade shows looks great in the fish store but you can't do it at home the next thing I want to showcase is the clear filter. This is an automated fleece roller aquarium filter. And basically it is designed to sit somewhere above or near your sump and trap the particulates instead of using a filter sock. As you can see right here, it's set up on a very specific sump. The white roll of fleece in the background is brand new. And of course it works its way across the base of that tray where the water is and then goes up to the dirty section where you just see it starting to roll up. Basically what happens is all your aquarium water is flowing down through the fleece and down into the sump. As that exposed section of fleece gets clogged up, the water level rises within the compartment until it hits a sensor. When the sensor notices this water level, it begins to inch the fabric forward to expose more of the clean floss to let more water pass out. The water level starts dropping the compartment again and it continues to trap particulates until it gets clogged and inches forward more fabric again. This roll that we're looking at is 50 micron, which is almost see-through when it's brand new. Now that you understand the premise or the basics of how this machine operates, what makes it so special is that it's completely modular. As you can see here, he's adjusting different heights and widths to where he can shrink it all the way down to nine inches wide. This thing can sit adjacent to your tank. It can sit on top of your tank. It can sit on top of your sump. It can fit into your sump. It just has to have the various different components and they have all these little accessories that you can add that will make this all work. If you're thinking that you want to add this to your aquarium, to your sump right now, to replace the filter socks you're so used to using, you basically have to find a way to make water pump up from the sump into that tray area and then drain back down. Now here are some more of the components that you can use to make it even taller or maybe just have one leg and the other edge of it leans on the edge of the sump. Frankly, it seems like it really comes down to just how much imagination do you have to how you can make this work for your system. And while you can see all these pieces, you might be thinking, oh, it's rickety. Once you assemble this and you've got it where it needs to be, I'm sure you'll be quite happy. And they actually have the components to make it longer and longer and longer for bigger applications. So if you had to have a three foot stretch of water being filtered, this thing could do it. And it doesn't waste paper because it only uses a little bit at a time it's not using a fixed amount each time the motor turns on. This is the box that the clear filter will fit into and this can set right on top of your sump or it can be on a countertop near the tank where it's going to pour down into the sump. It's got holes in the base to drain water out or if you want to set it up the other direction alternately you could have the water flow out the back whether it goes down into the sump or it could be set up high enough where it pours down into the display tank itself. What does it cost? What's the warranty? How much does it cost for the toilet paper? The lace unit, as you see it here, is going to retail for $249. It will come. We're still debating on if it's going to come with a 50 micron fleece or possibly an 80 micron fleece. Uh -huh. And we're thinking after the feedback we've gotten a Magna that we're going to offer different ratings. So 50, 80, and 120 possibly. Okay. Um, it's a 50 yard fleece. And oh, it's so light. Wow. It is. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> 50 yard fleece. And. Uh, you're going to use it based on variables on your system. Yeah, you said it doesn't buy distance, but how much is a roll in theory? The, uh, price, the price of replacements. Oh, oh, yeah. So the price of rolls are under $20. $120? Under $20. Under $20. Under 20. Yeah, under 20. Yeah, That's so yeah, much yeah. better than $120. Yeah, much okay. And then my 330 gallon <laughs> tank with Angel's tanks and it's bare bottom, so it's full of detritus at all times. Right. I'm getting two and a half to three months out of it. Nice. And that's 50 micro, so if you go higher, you can get more. Yeah, it would last longer because yeah. it wouldn't clog as quickly. Yeah, exactly. For those of you using T5 fixtures or combining it with LEDs, 
I want you to see this next section because this is something from ReefBright and it's really cool. ReefBright has a upgraded light fixture that uses T5s and LEDs. And the thing about T5s, if you've ever used them, they're always boiling hot. This light fixture has been on for at least 30 minutes. So these bulbs will be pretty hot, but you can actually touch everything on this rack, including the little reflector on the bulb, and it's not hot. Look, I keep my fingers on there. Normally, they're ridiculously hot. They found a way to cool down the bulbs to the point where the bulb will last longer and it won't overheat. All righty, so here are the raffle prices for today. There's Felix. That was his tank. <laughs> so here's a nice tank with stand. Bio cubes, additives, rock, salt mix. A small RO system. Ooh, Nio skimmer, yeah. These are the things people are gonna be winning today. Neptune gear, coolers. Oh, an awesome RODI system from Mila's Reef. Look at that. All right. And then over here, we've got Coral Life skimmer. Uh, some Miracle Mud, lighting. Ooh, a Radeon, nice. Here's a fancy sump from Geo. Some, whoops, some Vortec drives. Some two-part, another skimmer, more salt, and even a canister filter. And I see a couple of tanks there behind the table too. I'm assuming those are also in the raffle. That people are trying to win stuff. This way their tickets are already listed on the wall so you can check and see if you've won your stuff. And it kind of keeps the crowds down, but we'll see how today goes. Carolina Aquatics brought some beautiful corals this year, and I had to stop and take a good look at these. I mean, look at all the different colors. Lots of meaty corals. There's some scolies in there. There's some chalices in there. Uh, there's a whole ACAN collection. Hang on, I'm gonna go around these people and show you from the other angle. Here you go. Look at all these ACANs. ACANs are actually a really beautiful LPS coral. I actually love them a lot. I need to get myself some more of them. If you were shopping at MAC, now which one of these corals would you take home? These things glowed under blue light, of course. Here's a nice triple tank setup over a nice filtration example that was in the eShop's booth. The trick to perfect water at MACNA is huge filter socks changed out frequently and skimmers. Check out these clownfish. They look like a Mardi Gras fish. That bubble tip down below looks bleached in this video, but it's not. It's a green bubble tip. I see a lightning maroon clown in there. Lightning maroon clownfish were sought after about five years ago, and now quite a few have made it out into the hobby where they're more affordable. And in the next adjacent tank, here are a couple of live clams. This tank has a gorgonian in it, and if you look right down here, you'll see one part of it is completely open. See the polyps? Hiding out in the back of this tank is another lightning maroon clownfish. I just happened to notice when I was looking in this tank uh, that obviously there's a whole bunch of scolies in here and meaty corals. There's also Aquascape by Real Reef Rock. Real Reef Rock is man-made, not taken from the ocean, and already has the color on it to give you that look that you like so you don't start off with white rock. Our final tank for this video is gonna be a fish tank that was set up inside the Live Aquaria booth. Live Aquaria sells all kinds of dry goods, and of course they also sell live goods like fish, invertebrates, cleanup crews, and I've purchased from them several times. This is definitely a reputable company, and if you want what would be considered the higher end stuff, check out their Diver's Den section of their website. That's usually the fish that have been quarantined longer and have been made sure that they are eating properly and they come with a, believe, a 14-day guarantee. And that is a pretty good deal when you're getting livestock from an online business. I'm going to wrap up here. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Like this video if you thought it was good. Ask questions and I'll answer them. And part four is coming up in a couple more days.